Welcome back and this is another uh, YouTube video. So today I thought we'll go ahead and design uh, YouTube actually. So for this system design, essentially what you should first think of is okay, like what type of uh, functionalities or what type of services are we trying to create here? And so typically you're gonna want to kind of um, iterate with your stakeholders or your interviewer or whatever scenario you're in um, to figure out like what you're trying to actually implement functionally. And so in this case, what we're gonna do, and we can pretend that that stakeholder, that interview replied, is we want to implement the kind of upload video service, um, as well as we want to implement the kind of view, or I'll call it like watch video service. Um, and so from here, um, typically what you wanna think of is okay, these are kind of our like functional requirements so this is good, but what about our like non-functional requirements? So we gotta figure these out as well. And so in this case, why don't we say that, okay, well, um, naturally we're gonna want it to scale well and have low latency. So that's a good uh, keyword there. So low latency, because naturally when you're watching uh, YouTube or trying to get some metadata about a video, like the description or the comments, um, you don't want to wait very long or else you're going to switch to another tab. Uh, the next thing is typically what you want to think of is what we're going to want to favor. Um, do we want to favor in this kind of cap theorem um, that's talked a lot about is do we care about availability or consistency? And so in this case, we definitely, uh, definitely want availability. Um, I want to make sure I'm spelling this right, availability. And so that's because, well, although it's nice that um, you always view the most um, updated data or updated comments or make sure that you get the video as quickly as possible. Um, what's much more important is that after you comment on a video that it doesn't disappear and you lose that data or you definitely don't want to upload a video, you know, maybe it takes an hour for it to process. Um, you don't want to lose that video and it no longer be on YouTube. So we definitely care about availability um, over kind of consistency. Uh, I'm spelling C for consistency, um, or I tried to. Uh, consistency. Great, and so from here, um, we kind of define what our uh, non-functional as well, or our functional and our non-functional requirements. So let's go ahead and actually design the system. So um, from here, let's go ahead and start with this upload uh, service actually. So in this case, let's pretend that um, our client, so like kind of your uh, local computer, is sitting over here. And so this is, and I'll title it here, uh, the client. All right, and so from here, what you can imagine is that it's going to be calling this kind of um, upload service that we're creating. So let's go ahead and design that over here. So this is our upload service, and we can title it here, upload uh, service. Oh, upload service. And so essentially what we can imagine is the API is gonna have kind of two functionalities here. And so one of them is going to be okay. We want to be able to um, request the metadata. And so this is gonna be just like some REST API call. So let's call this uh, an API call. And so this is going to be um, requesting our metadata. So get uh, metadata. All right, and so essentially from here, we also want something else. And well, that's going to be like viewing and streaming that uh, particular video. And so that's going to be, or sorry, not viewing, this is the upload service. So we also want to have another call here, which is essentially going to be um, uploading the video. And so we can call that kind of the upload video uh, portion of the API, upload a video. And so what we can imagine this to be is not like a REST API, like you're not going to just simply upload a uh, 10 hour, uh, the sound of rain uh, video. Like you want to actually be kind of streaming this video um, to the upload service. And so what we can imagine this to be is something more like a WebSocket. So let's go ahead and type that out. So um, this will enable, enable you to have kind of a, a dedicated uh, connection through these ports. So you're kind of uploading this video um, kind of in chunks rather than just like one big API call of like a 10 hour long 
a video. And so from here, typically on YouTube, I know when I upload my own videos, um, there's going to be a bit of um, stuff going on in the background. Okay, so let's go ahead and kind of build this um, backend portion out. And so the first thing is this upload service that we just defined, it's gonna to want to store those videos somewhere, right? And so typically, what you can imagine for a video, it's not really textual data, um, but the video files itself, we're gonna to wanna to store in something called like object storage. Um, and the best example of that in the cloud, and especially AWS cloud, would be S3. So let's imagine that this goes ahead and we're uploading this uh, video that this particular user uh, just sent out. So their 10 hour long video is now going into an S3 bucket. Okay, so now we're storing that uh, video in those video files somewhere. But what about this metadata, right? Because that's another endpoint. So let's go ahead and we'll have another data store for that metadata. And this is because, well, this is completely different type of data um, that we're dealing with. This is now uh, textual data, um, which we can store in something um, such as like MongoDB or Cassandra. I'll probably lean towards MongoDB. Um, and so let's go ahead and write this out. So this would be kind of our, our metadata. And I'll use uh, the text here, so metadata. And from here, we're going to have our actual like video files. All right, and so once again, this would be something more like uh, MongoDB. Okay, and so now that we kind of separated the video files from the metadata files, the other thing that we want to be thinking of is um, generally you might be uploading your particular video file to YouTube in a certain format. Um, but yeah, as you can see, like there's a lot of different um, formats that you could be uploading it in, um, as well as different uh, quality. And so YouTube typically allows you to have like varying levels of qual like quality. Like I think there's like eight or 10 like uh, variations between like 1080p and like 480p. Um, and so YouTube has to be able to process all that. And so this kind of lends itself to another portion of this system that we're having. And I'm just gonna move me down here. And so what that essentially is, is that, okay, we're going to want to feed this video, these video files into a queue. Okay, and so that could be like a, a Kafka queue or something in AWS like um, uh, SQS, for example. And so let's go ahead and write this out. So this will be our queue. And so these video files are going to be feeding into this queue to then be able to be processed into these multiple kind of video formats. All right, and so what that's gonna look like is then this queue is gonna take these bit by bit and process them um, into this kind of new service. And we'll just call this like, um, like the encoding service, right? It, it encodes these files, encoding uh, service. Service. All right, and so essentially, as we're kind of decoupling this application, so these S3 files are landing into this queue, and one by one, we're processing them uh, into this encoding service, and then we'll be spitting them out into another uh, video files service here. And so just because we're dealing with the application or the uh, data storage layer, I'll bring it back to a yellow color. And so once again, these newly encoded video files are going to be getting stored in this new S3 bucket. So encoded uh, S3 files, S S3, or encoded video files, there we go. And so essentially this is just another S3 bucket, but now these files themselves are kind of that raw or initial uh, video format that you sent, but these new ones are encoded with the varying levels of quality. Okay, and so with that said, um, let's go ahead and think about um, the next service. So I think this is good for now. We'll go ahead and build the uh, kind of watch video service, and then we'll think about how to actually scale this better. So we'll keep it simple for now. Um, and so from here, let's go ahead and uh, create our next service. And let's define it in red. And so we're going to have another service here and I'll write it over here to the side. And so this is going to be getting called our um, watch uh, video service. Okay, and so let's go ahead and define that. And so essentially what we're expecting here is 
the client is going to be able to request a particular video and then be able to uh, stream that video to the browser. Not like live stream, uh, it's a, a data that's recently been, or it's a video file that's recently been encoded. So it's not live streaming, it's not happening in real time. Um, it's simply watching a video that's already been uploaded. And so let's go ahead and write up this request here. And so typically what you would imagine is something like, okay, we'll have an API, like a REST API endpoint. So API, and so this is going to be, okay, um, I want to watch a particular video, and this could be like the video uh, URL or like video ID um, that you're feeding in here. And so with that, then what you can imagine is then this video service is then going to fetch the location of that video file using the metadata stored in our MongoDB. And so then this video is essentially um, requesting um, the location using this particular video ID. So it's kind of doing a lookup um, with this video ID in MongoDB. And we're expecting it to return the location of where it's being stored um, in this S3 bucket. And so this is basically, um, could be like a signed URL. URL. Um, and so that allows it so that say if this video uh, file is no longer valid, like that pre-signed URL um, could add like an actual layer of defense here. So this could return like a URL location of where it's being stored um, in S3. And so then what you can imagine is then um, this client can then go ahead and basically um, create a connection using uh, probably something like a TCP would be favored over uh, UDP in this case. And that's because, well, um, for something like um, live streaming, you would want UDP because, well, if there's anything like a slight a disconnection while you're watching live stream, it's okay if there's some missing packets there, but um, typically you don't wanna uh, miss out on like five seconds or 10 seconds of your particular video that you're not watching in real time. Um, so you want a very stable uh, connection that's provided by TCP. So this would be a TCP based connection um, where essentially what you're imagining is that this client would then uh, through its kind of video player be re receiving these video files stored in S3 um, in chunks. So you wouldn't be doing the full video itself, but chunk by chunk be returning those particular video files. Okay, so that's basically the high level design, but now let's think about um, how we want to scale this. So what if um, a major event is happening or uh, we're just acquiring a lot more users, we want our um, YouTube system to scale well. So uh, the first thing that I think of is that we don't wanna simply be um, passing these S3 files uh, to the client um, simply by like one particular location. And so the first thing people usually um, jump to is thinking about a CDN. So uh, what this enables, and I think it's AWS uh, CloudFront is the, the service for that, um, in a, in at least uh, for AWS um, ecosystem. And so this is basically a uh, CDN here, so CDN. And so this is for uh, data such as like blob data um, for serving static content or like video files so that it's kind of geographically distributed so that the video files aren't just stored in kind of one uh, data center, but it's kind of being distributed across like multiple locations around the world. So that say you're a particular user um, over in uh, New York City. I believe you'd be using the kind of around the US East one location. Let's say you're on the West Coast, you'd be um, using something on the Western uh, side of the United States. Uh, but say you're in Australia, it might be over there and I think it's called Asia Pacific region, uh, but something like that. So essentially these video files would then be getting sent to the CDN. And so after you do the lookup for that particular URL, um, that URL will be propagated to the client, which can then be uh, requesting for those files from our CDN. And so generally what you can imagine is then, okay, if there's a, a cache miss, then we'll have to go ahead and kind of update that cache uh, to S3. Um, but what I'm thinking is maybe something more like um, we'll be kind of updating this particular CDN based on the frequency of the usage. So 
some videos, I'm sure there's outliers that get just like massively more um, videos in that case. So we would want to be serving uh, those particular videos much faster. So I would think of, um, uh, we wanna evict this and at least frequently use. Uh, another one that could be good is like, um, I believe um, first in, like uh, last out, I believe. Um, or I forget the term for it, but basically what I'm envisioning as another cash policy um, or uh, eviction policy, sorry, is that, okay, why don't we just shove in the uh, most recent videos because people want to see the most recently updated videos. But I think for me, I kind of like this um, least frequently used as the eviction policy. All right, and so from here, what about other um, pain areas? So naturally, we're gonna want to be scaling uh, this watch video service uh, at a much greater rate than the upload service. Because you can imagine there's a lot more viewers than uh, content creators, and there's probably at least like 10 or 20 times as many uh, video reads to a particular upload. And so what you can imagine is, say if we want to scale this, we would put in a load balancer here. I'll just um, annotate it as LB. And we would also have one um, over here. But you can imagine for every kind of one uh, times or kind of multitude of uh, services. So say if we have like uh, three upload services here, so it kind of scaled horizontally, um, you would imagine over here on the watch video service to basically be scaling to two um, to three times as much as that upload service. So if the upload service scaled to uh, 10 um, uh, services, you would imagine that then the watch video service would then um, double that or triple it um, in terms of like capacity. All right, and so when I'm thinking about other pinpoints, um, generally another approach uh, or optimization that you can make here is that you want to cache this uh, metadata store. And I'll just use another color here. Um, I'll keep it as purple because that's the theme for optimizations. We're actually green because that's what we use for our CDN and for caching. And so what you would imagine is that when we're serving or requesting um, from our MongoDB, we'll have a, another layer of caching here, such as uh, this could be uh, Redis in this case, so let's type that out as Redis. All right, and so this would essentially be so that whenever our upload service, um, or not our upload service, sorry, whenever our watch video service um, is making this request for the particular video ID, um, we're no longer just be directly looking at the metadata store, but we can do a quick look up to our Redis um, cache here. Uh, which can then be serving uh, the result of this uh, URL location here. Okay, and so that kind of breaks this chain of all the load being sent to the MongoDB, which also helps scale our uh, upload service since there will be um, less competition for resources because, well, um, for all these watch video calls, they're not all being directed uh, to MongoDB, um, but they're kind of being offloaded uh, to this Redis cache. And so I think from here, then um, for the eviction policy, well, that could be just um, similar thing with like least frequently used uh, as our eviction policy. Uh, you could also do something like, okay, well, you could do um, uh, most recently uh, uploaded video. And so that could be basically if it's not, or most recently watched. And so if it's not in here, we could then uh, go to the MongoDB metadata store and then populate of that result. So um, we recently used could be another option here. And so I think that's pretty good. I don't think I have anything else to add here. So I'll, uh, I'll just leave it here for today. So I hope this helped a little bit and um, good luck with the rest of your practice. So thanks for watching. See you.